not that song. Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 890. Today it is the return of the much-loved segment, Matthew's News. It's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway here at The Last Place on Earth, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Hello. We're going to hear some interesting facts about what you eat. And also stuff that's growing out of the sidewalk that you can eat. Plus, we're going to hear from Shelly Shuhart. Mike's Daily Podcast. Floyd, the floor man, and John Deere, the engineer. And he's so smart. Mike's Daily Podcast. He wrote this song for me. So now I have a job where I wake up at 4 in the morning so I don't get any sleep anymore. Now I hear that sleep is necessary so your health does not get poor. It helps rebuild muscles and helps you keep from getting sore. But how hard is it to go to bed at 9 p.m. during the summertime? Mike's Daily Podcast. The sun is out and people like being out. Side. Mike's Grilling, swimming, craft beer, drinking Daily. It's a party that never ends Podcast. Until we get the visa bill Yeah. But hey, maybe we had cash reward points on our visa bill And now we're going to be able to buy a gift certificate to Darden's Oh wait, Darden's is like going bankrupt or something Look who just walked in Oh dear Mike, this is Valentino the parking attendant And this is Bison Bentley, do you know that? Uh, why are you guys here? Oh, because I'm in the podcast picture for today, day. Yeah, you guys are talking about food. Do you know that? Oh, yes. Please see the cartoon at mikesdailypodcast.com, which features Valentino and I discussing food, because that's our topic today. But, yeah, so I was t- uh, waiting for someone else to come in. Oh, look. Hello, my God. Is it Shelly? It's too hard to get stuff to everybody's here. Oh, my God. Hi, Valentino. Hello, dear Shelly. I'm sorry it didn't work out between the two of us, day. Yeah, he's sorry. Do you know that? I know that, Bison Bentley. Thank you. But I'm so in love with the brewmaster. Isn't that lovely? I love that the you two are in love. It's so lovely. Thank you, Mike Matthew. Yeah, so what I was talking about was I get up at four. And when I get up at four, it's really early. And I guess I pretty much covered it in the song, didn't I? That's right, Mike Matthews. And these guys wrote that song. Hello, Mike. This is Floyd the Foreman. And this is John Deere, the engineer. I'm glad you enjoyed my lyricism. Your lyricism was fantastic, disgruntled John Deere. I'm even confused with all the characters here at Cafe Anyway. Ah! Mike, I am Valentino. And I am John Deere, the engineer. Yeah, that clears it all up. I do the chase rewards thingy. When you get like 5% cash back if you follow their rules, like uh, they split it up in you know, the four quarters of the year. And during one quarter, it's every restaurant you're at, you get 5% back. And then they, they give you all these gift certificates or whatever. I go and buy a Darden's gift certificate and send it to my mom because she deserves it because she's wonderful. But Darden's, you know, they have like Olive Garden and uh, what, uh, Red Lobster. Uh, the, the Longhorn Steakhouse and a bunch of other restaurants that are chain restaurants that you end up going to instead of going to a local mom and pop because you don't know those places. You don't know those mom and pops. They might have like rats as pets. Actually, rats make really cute pets if it wasn't for that disgusting tail. But they are, uh, you know, a chain and apparently they're having issues money-wise. There's all kinds of fighting going on with their, uh, their stocks, their board, something like that. There's uh, th- fighting. I know that. What I, that's pretty much what I gleaned from the, looking at the financial page. Uh, and, you know, I work at a financial radio station now, a business station. They talk about money matters and whatnot. So I should know this stuff better. But I don't actually host the show, which is probably a good thing. But I'm learning things. I'm learning stuff all the time. It's fascinating. And I know that there's infighting going on in Darden's that owns all these restaurants and that they got upset that the Olive Garden restaurants were cleaning their floors more than twice, a, their carpets rather, more than twice a month. They say, any more than that and you're going to destroy the carpets, that's going to cost us money. Send us all the invoices now. We want to see what the heck is going on. So anyway, I find that fascinating. My Matthew said it sounds like fascinating and I don't go to Olive Garden because it's not like really food. 
It, well, it's food, but it's not really Italian food. I mean, it could be if, like, I was blindfolded and really hungry. Yeah. But I don't like it. No. Do you? No. Okay. All right, so that's it, pretty much, that uh, Darden's is having issues with their carpets. I like getting 5% cash back, so I, I will get a credit card that does that. And I don't like getting up at 4 in the morning, but I have to do it these days. Actually, what's kind of cool about it is you got the rest of the day to do things, like podcast. Mike, you could clean floors with me, because that's what I do, because I'm Floyd the Floorman. Nah, sure, okay, I can help you with that. See, all the things I can do today. Maybe even catch a nap while I'm cleaning the floors. Yeah, I do that too. So, what do you think about Darden's and Olive Garden's? And uh, They own a couple other, that uh, 36... Uh, uh, oh, oh my gosh, I have been looking for hours to try and find out what Darden's owns. What am I going to do? Oh, wait a minute. This might work. Okay, Google. What does Darden's own? Darden? According to Darden Restaurants, through subsidiaries, Darden owns and operates more than 1,500 Olive Garden, Longhorn Steakhouse, Bahama Breeze, Seasons 52, The Capitol Grill, Eddie V's and Yard House Restaurants in North America, employs more than 150,000 people, and serves more than 320 million meals annually. So there's a good chance someone's listening to this right now that works for them. Oh, uh, Darden is awesome. And Yard House Restaurants is an excellent restaurant to get drunk at. Google's so helpful that way. Now, what do you think about all that and that weird OK Google function and stuff? Email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email. And also, oh, tell us your comment. You can comment as well. By going to our Twitter, which is at Mike Talks, and on Facebook, we're at Facebook.com slash Mike's Daily Podcast. And we read your comments on the section, uh, emails from email and your common, not so comments. Plus, you can also tell us if you would like to be on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. And go to our website, Mike's Daily Podcast.com with links to where to listen to the show in iTunes. If you do that, you can comment on the show and rate the show there. If you do that, more people find out about us and we don't languish in obscurity. You can also hear us on YouTube, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podomatic, MixCloud, Spreaker, Player FM, and Ameristream Live. And weekday mornings, you can listen to my morning show that I do on Wolverine Radio. That's 6 to 10 Eastern Time. And you can check that link out there at mikesdailypodcast.com. And I'm also playing country music on the weekends, uh, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, the link to that at mikesdailypodcast.com. Also where you can find us on Instagram, Yelp, and Tumblr. And if you would like to help support the show, all you got to do, if you're going to buy anything on Amazon, go through mikesdailypodcast.com first and buy whatever it is you were going to buy on Amazon. And that helps us out too. Plus, you can help support us through our PayPal account, our PayPal. Become a, a Mike's Daily Podcaster. And you can get a personalized MP3 for thee from all the Cafe Anyway characters, most of which were here today. Yeah, Mike, but we didn't want to be thee. Well, your win. All those at mikesdailypodcast.com, as well as the blog, the daily podcast picture, and all my past interviews. Matthew's News. That is Jason Vin- J- J- James Vincent McMorrow and the song We Don't Eat. But maybe you should eat some things that you are throwing away because that you're pulling them out of the ground and going, oh, these are ugly. I need to throw them out. In the Bay Area's low-income food deserts in which no grocery store can be found, within a one-mile radius, one can untap resource remains in the form of weeds. That's the premise, anyway, of the Berkeley Open Source Food Project, a collaborative research project run by a team of academics who are mostly based in UC Berkeley, including Philip Stark, the chair of the university's statistics department. 
For the past several months, he and his colleagues have been mapping out the edible wild plants in three East Bay food deserts in West Oakland, Berkeley, and Richmond, documenting all the edible plants they can find and testing them to make sure that they are safe for confunk- con- consumption or confunction if you're going to dance. The idea, Stark said, is that there is this bountiful supply of nutrient dense food. That doesn't need to be watered And that will thrive whether anyone wants them to or not Often to the chagrin of local farmers Indeed, 40% of the plants that grow on farms Are edible weeds that usually just get thrown away According to the East Bay Express One of the project's findings is that the top 15 nuisance plants on farms 11 of them are edible And 8 are, in Stark's words, pretty tasty A few of his favorites Sow thistle Which makes a good substitute for lettuce Sow thistle I like to say that word A wild fennel It's sweeter and more aromatic than the farm variety And wild radish Which Stark likened to an intensely peppery cross Between horseradish and mustard leaf Wild radish? Hmm Okay Google Wild radish this is becoming According to Wikipedia, Raffinus raffinistrum, wild radish or jointed charlock, is a flowering plant in the family Brassicaceae. Well, look at that. Yes, this is becoming a horrible Google commercial. All we need is one of those do, 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 stupid uh, musical themes that they have in the background of their commercials. I don't like the music they use in their commercials. It's so wimpy. Uh, it's, uh, it's not as good as James Vincent McMorrow's stuff. But yeah, oh, okay, this radish thing. Oh, that's what it is. So it's kind of yeah. This definitely is a weed. It's got a, it's got a really pretty bloom, but ah yeah, I've seen these around. It looks like this grows primarily though in more beach climates. Well then, uh, okay, Google, sow thistle. According to Wikipedia, South Russell is a village in Geauga County, Ohio, United States. Well, I'll have to go visit there and try and find some. Okay, Google. Sow thistle. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, Sonkus is a genus of flowering plants in the dandelion tribe within the sunflower family. Ah, it's also called Sonkus. Well, there we go. That's what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's got the little uh, yellow flower. Uh, it looks almost like a tiny little daisy or something. Yellow. I guess that's what you would call. Oh, those are pretty. Okay. Now, of course, here in the Bay Area, people are very adventurous in that way. And, like, they'll try and eat uh, 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 mushrooms and then die. It happens a lot here in the Bay Area. Some of you might say, oh, that's sort of the reverse redneck thing that happens where rednecks are like, hey, watch this. And then they do something really stupid, like uh, fire off a rocket tied to a skateboard and end up on the moon. But... This is, we try and eat different things. So uh, I think I've got one of these growing right in front of my house. No, it died. Darn it. Okay, next year when it blooms, I'm going to eat it and I'm going to see if I die. That is the amazing Joe Henry, who's been an influence on everyone from the wallflowers to Fiona Apple to, you know, he played, used to play at Largo's. In L.A. all the time. I I wonder if he still does that. But this album, Fuse, I listened to over and over and over again in the 90s when it came out. So continuing this theme about not wasting food and wasting the food that's around us. USA Today printed today that American households throw away about $640 each worth of food every day year and consumers don't really care about the environmental impact of trashed leftovers piling up in landfills this according to a survey out from the american chemistry council this is certainly true here locally in podcastro valley here we have these great uh, these free there's they're free to us these green waste bins and people are hardly even using them here in podcastro valley i use mine all the time i think it's fantastic I can get rid of any, you know, stuff that's dead in my backyard and, you know, plant-wise, not, you know, just uh, 
gnomes that I find back there, but like f- plants um, that I can't eat. Uh, go into the green waste and then they go cart it off. They get carted off to some kind of composting thing. I don't know what it is exactly. It just gets carted off somewhere, someplace, and is composted. So, yeah, we can put our coffee grounds in there, even our coffee filters, our uh, uh, used pizza uh, cardboard boxes can be thrown in there as well. And grease is supposed to go in there, which is great. I have saved so much money not having to clear out my plumbing due to grease clog up because all my grease goes into that green bin. But for some reason, podcast Valians aren't realizing that this is what you're supposed to do. I don't know why we're in the freaking Bay Area. People should know better. But at a time when Americans may be more attuned than ever to the chemical makeup of food, buying organic and sourcing locally, they're still struggling to avoid throwing a lot of food away. While many Americans live on leftovers, more than half use them to make new meals and nearly two-thirds repurpose leftovers for other meals like lunch, 76% also say they throw away leftovers at least monthly. Oh, uh, a show... On the business station that I work for, a guy named Rob Black, he was talking all about how you need to make sure that your leftovers are never in contact with air, that they're sealed up completely because it's the air, the exposure to oxygen, uh, the you know outside air that causes them to start to break down and then you got to throw it away. And then you have to do the George Carlin thing and say, leftovers make you feel good twice. First, when you're putting them away, I'm saving food. And then when later they've developed legs and they're green and have receded from the edges of the plate by more than a couple inches, when you throw them out, I'm saving my life. And food waste is more than 20% of what's in landfills and is a significant source of methane gas as it rots. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, methane is a potent greenhouse gas that contributes to Earth's warming. And there's the environmental impact created by growing and shipping food across the country. Wasted food accounts for about 2% of greenhouse gas emissions, 35% of freshwater consumption, 31% of cropland, and 30% of fertilizer usage. When people are asked why they throw away food... They say it's mostly due to food safety and wanting to eat the freshest food possible. Data suggests consumers may be underestimating how much food they throw away. More than half of consumers say they discard just 10% of their food, while 13% say they don't throw any away. But government estimates say that nearly a third of available food for consumption in the U.S. goes uneaten. Cutting waste may be as simple as changing the way food is stored after it's open, making sure food is portioned into the right size containers and that air is squeezed out of the bags, the plastic bags. And consumers need to understand where items should be stored, such as putting bread and pasta in cool, dry places. Yeah, that bread box is just a breeder of mold. What a stupid idea. All it is is good for measuring things when you want to know when something is bigger than one of those. Or is it as big as a bread box? And fruits and vegetables need to be relegated to the refrigerator, at least out of sunlight. Unless you're wanting things to ripen, like avocados and stuff. Leave them outside for a while and then stick them in the fridge so that you can preserve them and eat them later on. Oh, this is such a good article. I'm actually thankful for the USA Today today. Hey, look alive, I'm coming down. As we go outside of Cafe Anyway here at The Last Place on Earth, located somewhere in Podcaster Valley, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast. And here's today's podcast picture. Like I was mentioning earlier, Valentino's in the picture with me, and we're talking about food. Yeah, Mike, I eat out all the time, Dave. You don't even have a fridge, do you? Hey, what? That's just a word you made up, Dave. No, it's not. See, that's the other thing. is I'm noticing the younger generation, I don't know, this probably was my situation too when I was younger, but the food waste dig is insane. I've had now two roommates living with me in the past year, uh, not together at the same time, but they, both in their 20s, waste so much food. One of them 
he used to boast. He was a boaster. And he would say to me, oh, man, I'm getting fresh food. I go to this chiropractic college, and I'm all earthy, and I get the, every week, I get a farm-delivered bag of fresh produce every week. It's a bag, and I pay $11 a week, and I get this huge bag of stuff. Oh, what's in it? Oh, all kinds of, any names off, like about 10 different things. And then he never used any of it. I'd have to throw it out. He'd like leave it on the counter. It would turn to this mole. And then all these bugs would be buzzing around in my kitchen. I never have bugs in my kitchen. And this kid would bring these bugs in because he would be so irresponsible. And what would he be eating? Fast food the whole time. Like, Matthews, you need to calm down. I know, but it just was so hypocritical of him. And then other people throw out stuff way too soon. It can, if you, like was said in the article, seal it off, keep it from air, and you've got something that you can eat after a while if you can't get to it right away. I'm not saying eat spoiled food, but I think a lot of people younger in, the, in their 20s and 30s or younger are like way too germaphobic and scared that something might be, oh, it's older than a day, I can't eat it because it's already gone bad. Tell that to all the food banks and the people that collect unused food for the poor. I worked in one of those for a day, and it was amazing, the food that can be reused. We really need to start a movement about this, because I think this really is a thing. This is a thing that's huge. Everybody does it. Uh, You know, people in their 40s do it too, but I think it's much bigger with the younger generations. I might be wrong. What do you think? Email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. Or you can comment there on Twitter where we are at Mike Talks or on Facebook, facebook.com slash Mike's Daily Podcast. Hey, we read your comments on this section. Emails from email and your comment, not so comments. We'd love to hear from you. So that's pretty much the end of the show. I want to thank you for listening. Um, to check out my morning show that I do, weekday mornings. It's 6 to 10 Eastern Time. 3 to 7 Pacific time. I know that's really early for everyone on the West Coast, but that's how it is. And if if you're like me, you're up at that time anyway. Because I am up at that time anyway for my other job. How do you do two things at one time, Mike? You're doing this new job at 4 a.m. and then you're also on the radio in Connecticut. Are they the same job? I feel I've said too much. Mike, it's because you're magic. Magic Mike. Uh, No. No, I am anything but Channing, Shannon Channing Tatum, or Channing Tating, or whatever his name is. Mike, it's all about the Joe Manganiello. Yes, Mike, it's all about Joe Manganiello. Uh huh. I will take your word for that. Hey, next show, it's going to be the return of the much loved feature called Into an Interview. I'll be speaking to the extremely talented. Nashville-based singer-songwriter K.S. Rhodes. He makes some amazing music. I'm so excited to have him on the show. I really am, and it's going to be awesome. The, we're also going to hear from Benita, the scrum fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.